Okay, everyone, so I'm going to be kicking off this project from scratch. Um, to get started, I'm going to be just sort of scaffolding uh, everything, my project structure, um, and how I uh, will load my configs, basically. So I'm going to have some environment variables. Um, I'm going to load those into a struct, and then I want to get my database set up so that I can start working with uh, my data model first before really working with everything else. So that's going to be uh, the main goal for this video is to get our sort of database um, boilerplate all configured. So first things first, I think I want to set up an ENVRC file. I like using this because it scopes environment variables to a specific shell that I'm working with. And this allows me to uh, basically have different environment variables configured for different projects. So uh, I'll go ahead and create a file here, ENVRC. And uh, we'll go ahead and do DB name. DB host, let's just do database port. Postgres default is five, four, three, two. This is a good starting point, I think. Um, I'm going to be using this package that allows me to load environment variables into a struct. I'll show you it. So there's this package here that basically allows you to use tags to configure the environment variable that you want to map to a particular struct field. And then you can just simply load that. So I'm going to go ahead and install this package. Go get Okay, so now I'm going to create a config package. Uh, let's do this config slash config dot go. And let's do a type config. It's a struct. I'm going to have database name, string, env, db name. I don't want this env default. Let's do database host, database port, nice. Database user, yep. And then database password. And let's see what we got here. So I'm gonna say, create a new, technically I don't need to use config here, but let's do that. What we're gonna do is use the env package you can do parse as and then pass in config here. Actually, it turns out I'm doing this all wrong, so Actually, I'll make it a pointer because I kind of want this to be nil. So I'll do config and nil. Okay, so we've got these environment variables over here. These should get mapped to these particular uh, struct fields over here. And then we should be able to load this uh, so that we can use it at runtime. So the next thing I want to do is uh, go ahead and test out connecting to a database. Um, I'm going to create a, a new package called store and, cr and keep all of my database related code uh, in there for now. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, before we get started with that, um, I want to go ahead and set up Docker Compose to run Postgres locally. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're just gonna do this. And I'm gonna copy paste it in here. We've got, I'm actually gonna load in the environment variables so we can pass db password. And there's a few environment variables we need here that I'm also gonna pull from that
And then separately, I want to make sure we're mapping our ports correctly. So let me just make sure that we have something like this. Okay, so from here, we should be able to run Postgres using Docker Compose. We'll see if this works. Oh yeah, let's make sure we do D, dir e and v allow to refresh our environment variables. Okay, so those were refreshed. Now let's run that again. Okay, there we go. Sometimes you have uh, Docker uh, containers running on other projects and it conflicts with this. So I had to stop those containers. So this is now running. This is good. Now what I wanna do is just try connecting to the database. So I'm gonna create, go back and create the store package that I mentioned earlier. Create a DB file, and then I'm gonna put my database connection and uh, logic in there. So let's just do func new postgres db and it will return that. Um, what we're gonna do here is pass in the app config so that I can reference all those environment variables uh, that, we, that we loaded previously. So, okay, we've passed that in and what I want to do actually is create the data source URL. So I actually am going to modify the config slightly. What I want to do is actually create a, a method on here that creates the database URL for me. And we'll just do return dot as printf postgres ql and do all these things. We've got username password at host port slash database name. So let's do database user password host port database name. So this looks good. This is exactly what I want. Something like this. And then I can easily reference this here. Data source name is equal to config dot database URL. And now I can reference this using the standard library uh, SQL package, but I also need to import one more package, libpq, in order to use the Postgres driver. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, that's exactly what I want there. I'm gonna go ahead and do a go mod tidy just to make sure we have that. Okay, and it pulled lib uh, pq for me. So we got that. If error is not equal to nil, fail to open database connection. I also want to ping the database. So let's do a context. Mm, cancel. Let's do, yeah. With timeout, let's say five seconds and then say defer cancel and then ping the database. I've done similar code to this before. So let's return the database and nil if there's no error. So this all looks good. This is gonna wait five seconds maximum if it can't uh, ping the database. So what we can do is let's try doing, actually what I'd like to do is first connect to um, the database from the command line. So let's try that. Let's say psql. I actually want to go ahead and create this database URL string so that it's easier to connect to the uh, database from the command line. And then okay, 
Okay, so now I've got that. I'm going to refresh my environment variables. Now I can do psql database URL logged in. Let's check and see if we have any relations. So let's see what databases we have. I am connected to the async API as expected. That's the name of my DB. So cool. That That's all good. Um, next, what I think I want to do is uh, run some database basically run a database migration that builds our schema for us. So I'm going to create, I'm going to use uh, the tool. So I'm going to use this go migrate uh, library. It's pretty popular, um, has 15,000 stars. Um, seems pretty battle tested. I've used this before in projects and it works quite well. So I'm going to be using the CLI uh, tool here, basically. So I'm going to create some SQL files for the migration, and I'm going to create some commands in a make file to make all of this a lot easier to manage. So let's create our make file. And let's say db login. It's going to be the same command I just ran psql database url db yep so i'm doing the same thing here i'm creating a database url to connect to create a migration i'm going to copy this So I've already got the migrate binary installed. You will need to do that as well. You can follow that uh, those instructions on the uh, GitHub repo just by doing a quick Google search. I actually want this to be a variable that I set here. So I'm gonna make this name. I think that's how you do it. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a migrations directory just at the root here. And let's see if this works. So if I do make db create migration, and I'm gonna say name is equal to init schema. Let's just say something like that. Okay, so this created two files in the migrations directory, and it's schema up and it's schema down. And I am going to copy these from another location because I've already got these prepared. Okay, so we've got three tables here that are involved with this project, as I showed in the diagram previously. We've got a users table. I'm only storing um, email, a hashed password, and the creation time, um, that's all that's really needed for this project. I am gonna store refresh tokens in the database. Um, these are gonna be used to refresh the access token when those, those are expired. And we've also got the reports table here. This is the general schema that I'm gonna use for this. And I've got the user ID in each one of these tables. I've got a UUID ID for each of those uh, entities. And then uh, various metadata columns like created at, updated at, things like that. For this report, um, we're gonna store the output uh, S3 path in the database column, the down download URL, and then the expiration of the download URL. So pre-signed URLs do have an expiration or you can configure them to have one. And that's generally a good uh, idea so that they're short-lived in case <clears throat> anybody gets access to the download URL. Those can be used by anyone that has access to them. So we want to make sure that they're short-lived and um, we only refresh them when somebody who has access wants to refresh them. So this is the core schema we're going to use and 
Let's go ahead and see if we can run the migration. Let's go back here. And we will do this command here. Okay, so we're just using the database URL that I already configured. Path is the migrations folder that I created and we're gonna use the up command here. So I've got a session already established. We have no relations in here, no tables. I'm going to do make db migrate and this will run this command here. I should expect to see tables added. Okay, so now if I check the relations, I see refresh tokens, I see reports, I see users and I see schema migrations. This is a version table that go migrate adds for you. So we can check it out. And it's got only two columns and it only holds a single row, I believe. Let's take a look at the users table. We've got primary key is the UUID and email is a unique constraint as desired. Primary key for refresh tokens is the user ID and the hashed token. And we also have a unique constraint on the hashed token. And we've got a foreign key reference to the user table. So standard stuff. You do notice that uh, when I have this foreign key constraint here, I've got this on delete cascade. If any of the user records uh, are deleted and they are referencing uh, any of these child entities in these tables, these records will also be deleted as well, just to keep uh, your tables and your data kind of clean. This seems like a good stopping point. In the next video, I want to go ahead and start working on basically connecting to the database and writing uh, data access layer uh, code. So we'll start with the users table. I want to create uh, you know CRUD operations and write some unit tests for that. So that's what we'll be working on in the next video.